Be merciful unto me, O Lord. Be merciful unto me, O Lord. For I cry unto thee daily. For I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant. Rejoice the soul of thy servant. For unto thee, O Lord. For unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul. Do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good. For thou, Lord, art good. And ready to forgive. And ready to forgive. And plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. And plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. And attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee. For thou wilt answer me. Thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee. Among the gods there is none like unto thee. O Lord, o Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come come and worship before thee. O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. Our scripture reading was taken from Psalms, the 86th chapter, verses 3 through 9. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to thank Brother Chris for uh, the reading of our scripture on today. Um, and we want to thank you all for coming out to share in on uh, this Sabbath lesson with us today. Um, we're going to get, we're going to have, my name is Brother Mike, I'll be doing your lesson. Uh, Good morning, Brother today. Mike. Good morning, <laughs> sister-in-law. <laughs> and this is Brother Chris, um, I'll read Good morning, you. Brother Chris. <laughs> and we're going to have um, two selections from the choir, and then we're going to be right back with you. All right. All right. After this manner, therefore pray you. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Oh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Oh, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Oh, the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. The kingdom, the power, the glory forever. The kingdom, the power, the glory forever.
gave commandments And for us to choose life or to choose death Keep my commandments and live Father God, you're holy And your word is worthy to be praised Be holy for I'm holy You gave us more instruction Now let us find out who this really is Thank you perspective, uh, we're going to start out our lesson today uh, in Exodus chapter 20. It's from a very familiar portion uh, of scripture, but it's something that we need to look at and break down and understand. Uh, any society, any uh, community, any uh, group or any family that's not ruled and governed by the word of God is a messed up society. It's a messed up family. It's a messed up household. It's a messed up country. It's a messed up nation of people. And God gave us uh, these commandments in order to rule and govern us. And any time we don't interject these into our daily life. Brother Yermiyahu, there's nothing else to be expected but chaos and destruction. And we see what has happened where the world is concerned today. Man is running 
this planet straight into the ground. And they're talking about global warming. They're talking about this. And they're talking about that. But nobody's talking about these Ten Commandments, these laws, these statutes, and these commandments that God gave to us to live by. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to break them down and see where God is going to lead us today. Amen. Uh, that's Exodus chapter 20. Let me get there. And it's important for us to understand that um, these are the commandments that God gave Moses to give to his people to govern their lives. And these commandments will do something for you if you apply them. Now, this word becomes null and void as long as it stays here. It only becomes alive when you take it and you eat it and you digest it and you live it. You can't put this book up under your pillow thinking that it's going to get in here. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman who need not be what? Ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're gonna find it's not about how you feel, it's not what you think. It's all about what thus save the Lord from a biblical perspective. Come on, Brother Chris, start off at verse 1. <clears throat> and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All right, let's take a pause right there. One thing we need to understand what God is concerned is that he don't want you giving credit to anybody else. So he starts out in this uh, particular uh, 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 chapter uh, and this first verse that I am what? The Lord thy God that brought you out of bondage. It was me. It wasn't some other false god, some other pagan god. It wasn't that these uh, Egyptians just decided to be nice and let you go. It was me that brought you up out of the land of bondage. And I want you to always remember that because my glory and the credit that I deserve, I don't want it going to anybody else. And I don't want you mistaking this, mistake to mistake this for anybody other than me. And we know how God did that. He led them out of Egypt with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Come on, brother. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. All right. Let's stop right there. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We know that there's only one God, and that's what? The true and the living God. But see, what folk fail to realize, and let me put this disclaimer out there first. Um, you can make your wife your God. You can make your husband your God. You can make your car your God. You can make material things your God. That's right, bro. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What does he tell us? To seek ye what? The kingdom of what? God and his righteousness. And then everything else will fall into place. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's cut and dry. That does not leave, Brother H, any room for error. We serve a very specific God. You can't come back to him and say, hey, I didn't understand this. I didn't get this. And we live in an excuse giving society. Oh, I did that because of this. I felt this way, or I felt that way. There are no gray areas where God is concerned, nor his word. 
And then he tells us to, to make uh, uh, no graven images. Nothing in heaven and nothing on the earth beneath. God only wanted to be you and him. So while people are making graven images of a cross with beads on it, it's not going to get you from here to the corner store. And guess what else is a graven image? A picture. You don't know what Christ looked like. And I don't either. All I know is that he looked like me. And then Sunday church folk are going and getting a, 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 a fish put on the back of their car to indicate that they're Christian. God said, don't make anything. You don't know what, what, what things in heaven look like. You don't even know what things in the earth look like. God wants it to be all about him. And we're going to find out. Sister H, why God wants it to be all about him. Come on, brother, where we at in verse, uh, verse five. five? Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. All right, let's, let's, let's pause for a minute. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Reference to graven images, pagan gods, and this and that. God wanted Israel to be distinguished from what? From all of the other nations. And it set you apart from the rest of the world because Israel is supposed to be the example. We are supposed to set the stage or the direction that God wanted what? The rest of the world to go. So if we do our part, then folk that are looking at us or following behind us have no other choice but to what? Fall in line. Now we're going to break this down on a smaller scale because what you do as a man and what you do as a woman sets the stage for the direction that your family is going to go. And he mentions it right here. This brother just read it. Let me back up. The reason why God only wants you looking at him, because he's your life source. You can't put one foot in front of the other without the power of God. You can't take your next breath without God allowing it. That's why it's all about him. Now imagine, you see our total dependence on God. Imagine if he held that up for a few minutes. What would happen? So why can't we give him the credit that's do him. And look, this is why he said, don't, 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 don't do any of these preceding things. Because we're finding out these first four are about our relationship to him and what he expects of us and what we should and what we shouldn't do as it relates to him. This is all about God right now. It's not about you. It's not about your neighbor. It's what God expects from you as it relates to him. And a lot of times we don't understand the importance of that. But we will when we stand before God. Because we're going to have to give an account for everything that we have done in this flesh. And you're not going to be able to point the finger at this person. And Brother Brian, you're not going to be able to point the finger at that person. God is looking at what you do. And this is why. He says, because I am a jealous God. 
It's not going to allow you to give that credit to anyone else other than him. Now you get outside of the pocket of that and you have trouble. Not so much as where man is concerned, but you have trouble where God is concerned. And no one knows this like our ancestors and us. As a people. We're suffering right now from decisions that were made 2,000 years ago. And we're going to see how the effects of decision making not only affect you, but they affect your children, so on and so forth. So it's not about what you say, it's about what you do. And what you do carries consequences, good or bad. Now check this out. Look at what, look at what uh, the scripture is saying to us in this uh, still uh, fifth verse, the second part. Look what God said, because he's a jealous God. And visiting the iniquity, the sins, the things that the fathers were not supposed to do. He said, I'm going to visit their sins, the sins of the fathers, on the children to the third and to the fourth generation. Now, the first thing the world want to tell you is, I ain't got to give reparations back. I didn't put you in slavery. It wasn't me that did that. Yeah, but your forefathers did it. So what we find here is if you don't live a righteous life before your children, and if you don't teach them how to live a righteous life, God is going to judge it. And it's just like that boulder rolling down the mountain. It's just going to continue to pick up speed as it spirals out of control. And so the sins of the fathers and its implied mothers affects that of the third and the fourth generation until somebody wakes up repents of their sin and says the buck stops here as for me and my house we're going to serve the Lord that's what stops that boulder from spiraling out of control but we see the products of what's going on in society today for people taking these laws, these statutes, and these commandments out of their hearts. So now we have to contend with people being raised in a society that what? Don't know God. And we're going to find out today uh, the ramification of disregarding God. Come on, brother. Verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. He's going to show mercy, but guess where that mercy is going to be shown? To those that are obedient to what? His laws, his statutes, and his commandments. And only to those that submit themselves to the word of God. There's no other way. Come on, brother. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. All right, some folk, well, how do you take the Lord's name in vain? By just using it frivolously? And we hear people do that day in and day out. They'll say, God, there ought to be some holiness where God is concerned. That's right, bro. 
But how do you inject holiness into a society that what? Does not know God. Simple. There's a simple way to inject holiness into a society that doesn't know God by you letting your light shine. Because for some people, the only light they're going to see or the only peace of God they're going to see is the way you live your life. So if you say you believe in this truth, then you're representatives of God. Then the book says, let your light shine that men and women might see your good works and glorify who? God. But if you don't do your job, how can the world see? A call to what? A higher standard. People are busy talking today. And not living this truth. And the reality of it is this. We come here every Sabbath. Brother, we get into it with each other. Over things that don't mount to a heel of beans. You arguing with me, you want to show me what you know. And I'm arguing with you and I want to show you what I know. Then we leave, come back next Sabbath, and we do it all over again. That's family. <laughs> now, where does God get the glory in that? When we're supposed to be about his business, living this truth, spreading this truth. But I'm too busy falling out with other Israelites. We come and fuss and argue with each other. And look, I tell folk this all the time. And, and we've been um, going over this in our Q&A on Wednesday night. That uh, the biggest problem Israel has is Israel. Black Lives Matter. When? Only when a white person kills a black person or an Arab kills a black person. There are hundreds of Israelites that have died this month from black on black crime. Where are the protesters? Why isn't Israel roused up? Because only when a white man does it. Tell people, Israel is Israel's biggest problem. The Bible says, if my people who are called by what? My name will seek my face, right. humble themselves and pray, and, and, and turn from their wicked ways, yeah. then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Amen. It's not going to happen at a voting poll. Mm -hmm. They're only telling you what they want you to hear. So you can vote for them. And then once they get in office, you're not getting what you asked for anyway. Mm -hmm. They sold us a bunch of wolf tickets, Democrats and Republicans. Mm -hmm. The only person that's going to get us out of this predicament is when you start doing what you're supposed to do, when I start doing what I'm supposed to do, yeah. when you start doing what you're supposed to do. Then we all turn to God. And then he's going to say, wait a minute. I hear something. <laughs> and then Israel will begin to prosper again and become the head again and not the tail. Because these Sunday folk out there lying to you. Y'all know that Donnie McCurkland song, we blessed in the city, we blessed in the field. <laughs> no the hell we not. <laughs> That's not what the book say. And we can only say what 
The book says. We need to look at. From a family perspective. What you do. Affects me. And what I do affects you. So I don't just go out here living life any kind of way because it's going to affect my brothers and my sisters. And then I can't come to you telling you how to live your life and telling you what you got to do if I'm not doing it myself. That's what Israel's problem is. Folk want to look more the part than be the part. You can grow the beard down to your ankles. <laughs> Put your fringes on to where you're stepping on them when you're walking. If it's not in here, if it's not in your mindset, if it's not in your way of thinking, it's irrelevant. It means nothing what God is concerned. Romans tells us, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. This has to be changed, and it has to be conform to this. And until that happens, we're still going to be struggling and we're still going to be in the same predicament that we're in. The tail and not the head. We're functioning in a position that's not intended for us to be in. We're living beneath our means because we have not aligned with the commandments of God. We're too busy trying to be like all the other nations. And we already know where the trend set us. Anything we start doing, they start doing it. So what will happen if we start living a righteous life? By eating these commandments. And look, I tell people, I don't like wasting my time doing anything. If I'm doing something, I got to be getting something out of it because I can't justify it for me. I got hooked on a TV program, came on once a week. I'm too embarrassed to tell you the name of it. <laughs> but every day at that particular time, I had to be there and watch this. And I said, these people have already made it. And they may be rich and, 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 and enjoying the financial Things that this world has the, to offer. But it's all sinful. And if I'm sitting back giving them ratings and credit because my TV is on the channel, I become a partaker of their nonsense. Because they make more money the more people watch. Interject a commercial. They get paid a portion of whatever's being advertised. And then I've wasted my time on some nonsense. We need to become more productive as it relates to what? Being about our father's business. The book tells us only what you do for Christ will last. Everything that you see right now, the $100 gym shoes that you have on, all this stuff is going to burn up. Can't take none of it with you. And I've seen that. I've been at funerals. person dead was a drug dealer. His homeboys come up there and drop a lot of money in the uh, casket. He getting buried with a big fat gold jewelry on his neck. All that stuff gonna burn up unless the people that was burying him before they throw that dirt on him, they gonna get it off of him. <laughs> but these are things of the world that get us and our people sidetracked. If you love me, live your life to the best of your ability. Because I, I'm blessed by seeing that. And if I love you, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to live my life to the best of my ability. Because 
it's going to have a positive effect on you. We're all interdependent upon one another. And unless we get that in our head, we're going to be constantly moving backward instead of moving forward. Or standing at mark time march. Going nowhere. And if you're in this truth, it's progressive. It's constantly moving forward. Come on, brother. Uh, we have verse 6. Uh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Uh, where were we at, brother? Verse 7. Verse 7, come on. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in... Oh, I'm sorry, verse 8. All right. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. All right, look, look, check this out. So, if you're grown, you got children, and... They're falling under your rulership, and they live in your house, and you say you keep the Sabbath, guess what? Then you're in an authoritative position over the children that are in that house. Guess what you should mandate for them? They need to be keeping the Sabbath. If they're up under your authority, and they're up under your rule. And it's simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Saturday. It's the Sabbath day. So you cannot be an adult in the house and you honoring it, and you letting the 10-year-old do what they want to do. God is going to judge you, and guess what? He's going to judge that 10-year-old too. Because you're setting a precedent for him. So when they grow up, they're going to be doing what they want to do on the Sabbath day. God is serious about his business as it relates to his people. And if you're going to benefit from the mercies of God that he talked about in the preceding verses, the only way you're going to benefit from that is being obedient to his word, to his will, and to his way. There's no other way. There's no gray area. He's not going to make, um, what do you call it? What word am I looking for? He's not going to make a uh, something just for you. He's not, going to, uh, he's not going to compromise in order to, com uh, to accommodate your schedule. You have to conform to his schedule. It's not going to happen. Now, we know we're on the bottom right now. We're always scratching and trying to dig forward. And then something else happens. Why do you think these things keep happening? They're happening because we're living under these curses. And we're not being obedient to these laws, statutes, and these commandments. There's a simple remedy for the problems, sister-in-law, that ail man. And that remedy. It's turning to God and being obedient to these law statutes and commandments. So, we can save folk a lot of money if they just listen to what's going on in here. A lot of heartache and a lot of pain if they turn to God. But folk are too busy trying to cater to what? This right here. We live in a feel good generation. If it feels good, do it. And there's no low that's too low but no height is too high that people won't go through in order to fulfill the lust of his flesh. A man that does not know God, and when I say man, it implies woman as well. Because you got some women out there today that are just as bad. A man that does not know God is subject to doing anything. There are no limitations, and we're going to find it out. Come on, brother. Verse 11, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rest of the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy wait God minute, gave. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Honor your father and your mother? Yes, sir. Folk today are too busy trying to be friends with their kids instead of being parents. The Bible says you honor your father and your mother that your days may be what? Long upon the earth. Well, guess what? People dying at 16, 17, and 18. 20, 23, 24. My mother has had cancer for the last 10 years. And guess what? 
she living longer than these folk. But I know she loved her mother and she honored her mother. But you all see it every day on the news. Teenagers shot and killed. Folk getting killed in car crashes. How in the world do you have an 18 year old on the basketball court Drop dead. Nobody knew he had a heart problem. Honor your mother and your father. And that's without condition. And that's what these laws, these statutes, and these commandments come with. Without condition. God says you either do it or you don't. He gives us a choice. He's a free will God. Now it's to your benefit if you apply it, but it will definitely be to your demise if you don't. <clears throat> I'm going to say this, but you can write it down. You don't have to go there, brother. Uh, Romans 6 and 23. Romans 6 and 23. You can write it down if you want to. The Bible says that what? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. That's this word. If you apply it to your life, if you follow Christ, it brings life. But if you make that other choice, it brings death. It's cut and it's dry. It's cut and it's dry. We serve a no-nonsense God. He's not playing. Just in this last year or so, our whole lives have been turned upside down. You can no longer go to the airport Put loose and fancy free anymore. Look at what's happening, and we talked about it in our QA in Australia. Those folk went over there and did those indigenous people, in some cases, worse than what they did to us over here in the Americas. And guess what's happening? They have a plague, they're calling it of biblical proportions. You can't just go take nobody's land and think that God is not going to judge you. And then what they're contending with right now, they had a drought for so long, and then they have a big, humongous mice infestation. They're laying in their beds and mice are crawling in their hair. This one lady got part of her eyeball here. But, but you all went over here and took this land. You killed the man. You raped the woman. It's your history. It's part of who you are and what you do. And guess what? Each continent you went on and colonized, they had a Bible in one hand and a sword in the other. Now that's that other Christ. That's that Western European religion. And when God comes back, guess what he said? You're going back to the land where you came from. So you may have stolen the land, but it's going back. God is not one to be played with. He says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And look, I don't care if it do take 400 years or 500 years. Every second that go by, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, is getting closer and closer to the time of that vengeance. God is going to judge us. And he's no respectful person. He says he reigns upon the just as well as the unjust. There is a price to be paid. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. It's in the book. Alright, come on, brother. Verse 13. 
Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. That, that specifically means you shouldn't take another person's line. We all know what that. That's simple. These are rules that God put in place in order to maintain a what? A harmonious society. A productive society. A society that's glorifying and edifying God. Interject sin into the equation and watch what happens. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. The first four was what God expects from us as it relates to him. These last six are what God expects from me as it relates to you and how I respond to you and how you respond to me. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Man, a society like that would, would be a flourishing society because I don't have to worry about you and you don't have to worry about me. It holds me to a higher standard. But when we can't take this to work and put it on the desk because it offends people, this standard is gone from a worldly perspective because they don't want this standard applied. And then you go down to the courthouse. And to me, it was a, a waste of marble and granite. <laughs> you actually have the audacity to hang these commandments up in the courthouse, where the injustices and, 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 and the atrocities are perpetuated upon our people. And you're looking at these commandments. It is a joke. When I look at the dollar bill and see in God we trust when a man would do anything for a dollar because he knows not the God of this book. Right. For the love of money is the root of evil. Come on, brother. 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me, when I see my neighbor, uh, uh, that's a hardworking fella, go to work, and then his wife's boyfriend sneaks in the side door, something is wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. That's the society that we live in. Don't covet thy neighbor's wife. That means you got a wife and you want his wife. You got a car, your neighbor get a car, you want to one-up your neighbor. So you'll go get in debt just to get to look better than what he, he looked. I'm not in a race with no man. I'd be foolish. Well, I might as well share with you. <clears throat> so when we want to cater to this, and we don't cater to this right here, we act out of pocket. And we're going to be judged. I'm from North Carolina. I went to North Carolina. I'm down at the courthouse to get a, um, a background check, criminal check, you know, for a job. There's this old fella down there. He's in his 70s. You can be an old man and still a boy. Your age does not determine your maturity level. He's 70 some years old. He should have saw this coming a mile away. He done got, and I'm just gonna tell it like it is, he done got a ghetto hood rat girl pregnant. And she knew what she was doing. Part of that man's social security check gonna be going to that little kid, definitely after he's dead and so on and so forth. The older we get, if we say we're in this truth, the more mature we should get. There should be a balance. There's nothing worse 
that seeing an old foolish person that's still getting tricked up by that devil. There comes a point in time in life where we should grow and we should mature where God's word is concerned. And if we're practicing this, it helps us to avoid what? Pitfalls in life. The only thing I don't like is that I didn't come into this truth soon. There are a lot of things I could have avoided if I had been living a life that called me to a higher standard. Everyone sitting in here can look back at some regrets. And I try to tell my sons, if you listen to me, you'll avoid some of the knots I got. And that's the same thing God is telling us through his word. If you listen to me, I'll show you my mercies. You have my protection. You have my love. That's what these law, statutes, and commandments are designed to do. Give us God's protection. Keep us in uh, uh, communion with him. And then keep us in harmony with each other. All we got to do is apply it. The first four, relative to him, the last six are how we treat one another. And guess what? It is imperative that we get this right. Because if I don't have my relationship right with you, my relationship with him is going to be out of whack. How can you say you love me and hate your brother? It's not going to happen. So it is imperative. If I want to see the kingdom of God, I got to be ruled and governed by what's in this book. He's coming back. Look, the book say they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And we know he's coming back for a church without what? Without spot or wrinkle. Guess what makes you wrinkle free and spotless? It's applying these laws, these statues, and, and, and these commandments. It's the only thing that makes you spotless and wrinkle free. And if you're not walking in this truth, then you're full of wrinkles and you're full of spots. And he's coming back for a church without spot or without wrinkle. I didn't write this. I just believe in his truths. So it's time for us to do something. It's time for us to do an inward evaluation of ourselves. If you love the person that's sitting next to you, you do it. It's going to work out for your benefit, and it's going to work out for theirs. And we're going to be in harmony where God is concerned, and we're going to be blessed. Now, if you don't, just know the wages of sin is death. Those are the only two categories. Death or eternal life. Only two roads of significance. A broad road and a narrow road. Did we get all those commandments? Yes, sir. Because I'm about to shorten this up. All right. Now, this is what we hear. Like I said, folk like looking more like Israel than being Israel. Just because your, kin, your, your skin folk, it don't make you kin folk. Just because you're an Israelite, you don't get a shoe in in heaven. You still have to succumb to faith in Jesus and being obedient to these laws, these statutes, and these commandments. You don't have to go there. You can write it down, Revelations chapter 12 and 14. Herein lies the patience of the saints. Well, what is a saint? 
A saint is a person that's deemed holy, set aside, and dedicated unto who? Unto God. That's what a saint is. Herein lies the patience of the saints. Those who keep the commandments of God, that's these laws, these statutes, and these commandments, and have faith in Jesus the Christ. So from that perspective, from that perspective, we got to tie both of them in. And if you don't have both of them, you're not going to the kingdom. And see, what folk want to tell you is, for, and I heard it from the Sunday church folk, and I've heard it from the, some folk that claim to be in this truth that come on the Sabbath. And I'm going to tell you just like this, and this is applicable to the Sabbath church goers and the Sunday church goers. The book said if you broke one of the commandments, you what? You broke them all. And so from that perspective, we all have to be on our P's and Q's where God's word is concerned. So, 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 so I've heard folk on both ends. The Sunday church folks say, oh, all I have to do is have faith in Jesus Christ. And their go-to signature scripture, if they don't know nothing else, brother Giada, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And they cleave to that and they disregard the Old Testament. And they feel as if it resolves them of any responsibility of having to change. The Lord said, come as you are. But this book calls us to a higher standard of living. And, and, and Paul said in Romans, around about the sixth chapter, show me your faith and I'll show you my works. Then he says, faith without works is dead. You can't claim to know him if you're not walking in his laws, in his statutes, and in his commandments. And then folk that say that they're in the truth, they have the beard down to their kneecaps. The fringes they're tripping over. Looking holy and looking righteous. They discount the New Testament, thus resulting in discounting Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Now, this is what we find. About two or three more verses and then we're going to close out. I really was not expecting to be up here this long because I really haven't had any sleep. But we're going to make it do what it do. And I'm going to go ahead and, and tighten this up so we can uh, finish enjoying the rest of our Sabbath. Look at this. Um, let's go to, like I told you, they use their faith in Christ just to justify where they're at and they disregard the law, statutes, and commandments. Um, and, and, and that resolves them of any accountability and, and that's not uh, the case. Um, let's go to 1 John 2 and verse 3. already heard the importance of what it means to keep the commandments. This brother just read all ten. All right. That's um, did I say First John? Mm -hmm. All right, chapter two. Okay, cool. Let's go to First John chapter two, verse three. Everybody there? All right, let's go. Let's 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 go. When you got it, brother, go ahead and 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 read it for us. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So there is an indicator that you know God. There's an indicator that you know Christ. And what is that indicator? That you keep his commandments. 
Now, 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 now you all see that in your book, right? Okay, so I got the same thing in mind. So, so we're not reading from a trick Bible. So it's a general consensus. It's in all of your Bibles, right? You only know God if you're keeping his commandments. Now, 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 now we hear folk with all these spiritual cliches. You go to the grocery store. Hey, how you doing? I'm blessed. I'm better than blessed. I'm highly favored. <laughs> you call some folk on the phone. You get a message before you hit a beep. Everybody want to appear to be righteous. When all you have to do, because there's an indicator, is live what this book says. I don't care how good you talk. I don't care how good you dress. I don't care what you say. If your life don't line up with what's in this book, you're wasting your time. You may be getting by, but you're not going to get away. And then who do we think we're fooling? And I, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it anyhow. Y'all ever been in the doctor's office? And you got an old couple sitting next to you, and they think they're whispering, but they're talking really loud. <laughs> you know, they actually think they're whispering. They even put their hand over their mouth, and you hear everything they say. That's the same thing where God is concerned. Who, you, you can't hide nothing from an all-seeing God, an all-knowing God. It's stupid to even try it. He sees all. He knows all. The Bible says, fear, fear not the man that has the power to harm this physical body. But you better fear the one that has the power to cast your soul into heaven or hell. But we putting on airs for each other. Wait a minute, here comes the brother from the church. <laughs> we even try to walk holy with it. But God knows all and he sees all. Come on, brother. Right. And see, I don't want to waste my time. I, I, I like you all, but what you see is what you get with me. I'm not putting on the front for anybody because God knows all and he sees all. Amen. And nobody in here has the authority to put you nowhere. I'm not trying to impress a man. I'm trying to impress God. How you doing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, brother. Verse 4. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. All right, look, if you're not keeping these commandments, this book calling you a liar. See, you don't know him unless you're being obedient to his laws, to his statutes, and to his commandments. That's the book. Come on. But whosoever keepeth, keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. We know that we are in him. He said, if you abide in me, I will what? Abide. abide in you. And if he's abiding in you, the indicator is you keeping his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. That's enough right there, brother. Come on. Let's go to, um, and this is one that we need to understand. Uh, let's go to, um, uh, let's skip down to the same chapter. Let's go to 15, start at verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man Wait, 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 wait. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Some folk chasing that dollar day in and day out to obtain worldly things that they'll never be able to take with them. If you love this world, then he says that the love of God it's not in you. I don't know about you, but I know about me. I get tired. Turn on the news before you leave in the morning to go to work. Bad news! Crash on I-96. Two suspect cars shooting at each other. Freeway closed down. Get in my car, turn on the radio. More bad news. Get to work. Co-worker got telling me some bad news that, 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 that affected him and his family. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of all of the bad news. 
Love not this world, neither the things of the world. Come on, brother. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Wait a minute. The lust of the flesh, the pride. The Bible says before pride cometh what? Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If you say you love this world, and it'll show because out of the heart flows the issues of life. You look at what a man is doing all the time, it'll tell you where his heart is. We need to get things in perspective so that we can live up to that call to a higher standard by way of God through his word. All right, brother. Probably got one or two more to go to, and we're gonna we're gonna leave it alone. All right. Um, and these we need to definitely get in because folk want to give you excuses, and then folk want to tell you, as long as I got faith in Christ, I'm good, and blah blah this and blah blah that, and then they want to tell you that it's too hard to to make changes. Well, um, hell will be a lot harder. Lake of fire, you can't get out of that. There's no, 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 no coming back from it. All right, look. Um, this is what we got to understand. Because all of what we see that got um, our folk in trouble and got us in the predicament that we're in, it's all tied back to this flesh. And um, this is not a new problem because we live in a feel-good generation. Guess what? Our forefathers lived in a feel-good generation. They want to be like the other nations. They want to do what the other nations did, and God didn't want them to do that. God wanted them to direct their attention upwards toward him and outwards towards each other. Israel didn't want to do that. The world was supposed to mimic Israel, but Israel mimicked the world, and we're still doing that to this day. And then what we're saying is it's, it's hard and, 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 and that you could stay the way you are. They got homosexual churches. Um, they got places in the churches where they're marrying same couple this and same couple that. And we know that all these things are against God and it's all according to this flesh. All right. But let me tell you something. God calls us to a, 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 he calls us to a higher standard. And look, we're going we're gonna to find that out in these last few verses. Um, because we do have the power to overcome this flesh if we know who we know. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. All right, brother. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and I believe verse uh, 13. I'll tell you in just a minute. Um, all right, look, check this out. Go on ahead. 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able but with the temptation also will make a way to escape. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Go on here, brother, go on here. That you may be able to bear it. All right, that's it. God, uh, there have no temptation that have taken you, but that which is common unto who? So the one sitting next to you got to deal with the same thing that you have to deal with, right? And it's all tied in this flesh. So these temptations are common. What man is concerned, it didn't just start today. But see... Paul let us know that by way of God, you don't have to give in to him. He said he will not suffer us to be what? Tempted above that which we're able to. But will with that temptation make a what? Make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. There is our out. Our out is in Christ Jesus. Now, I told you earlier, a man that does not know God, he doesn't have an out because he's going he's gonna to feed this flesh. It's the reality of it. But what uh, makes you a distinguished difference, what makes you a peculiar person, 
is because you've been called to a higher standard by way of these laws, these statutes, and these commandments. Now, folk want to tell you, I'm not God. So you can't expect me to pass up on some of this good stuff. That's what they tell you. Don't put on me uh, these requirements because I'm not God. And, 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 and Christ nailed it all to the cross when he died. So I can justify where I'm at because he changed. I think this is going to be our last one. Um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. And, and we talk about how God doesn't understand this and he's God and blah, blah, this and blah, 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 that. Christ was Christ and blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. That just goes to show you people's ignorance. And the Bible says they've been ignorant of God's righteousness. goes about establishing their own. Ignorant means you just don't know. And why don't we know? Because we don't take the time out to dig in this book. And find out for ourselves so we listen to what comes out of a man's mouth. And God says, when we do that, we're going to be blown by Brother Q. Every wind and doctrine that comes our way. Because we don't take the time out to study what's written in the book. This is our last scripture. Come on, brother. Because I want you to understand that Jesus Christ understands Right where each and every one of you are. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews 4 and 15. This is our last scripture. Uh, you can come on with it whenever you get it. For we have not an high priest which could not be touched with the feelings of our infirmities but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Seeing, wait, 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 no, no, no. 15, for we have not in high priest, who is that high priest? So there's a general consistency here that that high priest is Jesus the Christ. Uh, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But he at all points was tempted like as are we. Look, if you're tempted with over drinking, then guess what? Christ was tempted with it. If you're tempted with doing something you had no business doing, Christ was tempted with it. Whatever sin that has tempted you. Christ dealt with the same thing, Brother Yayana. But guess what the scriptures say? Yet without sin. And guess what? If we inject this word into our hearts, into our minds, and into our souls, we too can stand strong in the word of God. And we'll be able to combat the devil when this flesh starts to rise up. You all represent somebody. You represent Jesus the Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow him. He's mimicking the life of Christ. And guess what Christ is doing? He's pointing towards his father. And if God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, you can't be contaminated with the ways of this world because you have been called to a higher standard. There's your lesson for the day.
Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Really appreciate